Hey all, welcome to Bollock Bayon here on Roll20. We are Stir Friday Night. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to be here. This is our session one. Um, you know, if you didn't see our first session, we did our session zero uh, over for Roll20Con. That's live now over on their YouTube page. So go ahead and take a look at that. But we are uh, just going to hop right in a little bit. And to get that started, let's do some intros. Um, we are all members of Sir Friday Night, a uh, comedy collective here based in Chicago that is America's oldest uh, all-Asian theater and comedy uh, troupe. Uh, we've got such renowned alumni as Danny Pudi, as uh, Stephen Yoon, as Mary Sohn, and one day Ben Cummings, if he's lucky. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, um, we all uh, know each other from doing theater in Chicago, and now we live in this new era of COVID, and we decided, well, I reached out to them, I was like, hey, let's play a game online, because that's the only way that I can hang out with all of you, um, and feel safe about it. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're here, we're playing Balak Bayan, it's a game that is inspired by Filipino lore and mythos, um, set in a cyberpunk future uh, setting. And, um, yeah, let's go around, introduce you, uh, each of y'all. Let's start with, uh, the top and Erica. <laughs> what? Do you want to, okay, this is on me. I just said, I just asked you to introduce yourself and I didn't say anything else. Uh, Erica, tell them who you are, uh, who, what's the name of your character, just the first name, um, and what your class is oh right I have, I have this written down let me look at this uh yeah uh just ask folks um yeah just your name and what's the best thing you've eaten since the last time we played together mm -hmm. That sounds so good. And what day was that? What, what, like, how, how good was it? Was this, like, you had it on Friday and it still was the best thing? Was it Saturday? Or was it just, like, earlier tonight? Oh. Thank you. How about now? How are we on? Can Is that fixed? Just... Chat, can, can you, you hear, hear us now? now? I said so much funny stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone well, was very yeah, funny. Yeah, it was, it was really. <laughs> everyone was actually just roasting me, so that was perfect timing. <laughs> I think we're fixed now. Um, so, Erica, yeah. yeah. Tell us uh, who you are, um, and actually, uh, this is good. We'll save your character stuff for later. And yeah, just what was the best thing you ate? Tell us about those chicken thighs. Okay, yeah, my name is Erica, and spoiler alert, Masood, the best thing <laughs> I ate since the last time we all saw each other um, was these dang chicken thighs I made with a um, bunch of herbs, root vegetables. It was amazing. It was delicious. Hell yeah. Uh, ben, up next. Oh, hi, I'm Ben Cummings, he and his. Things I've eaten since Friday. Uh -huh. um, I had some ramen, it's quite good. Uh -huh. you, know, oh, you know what I had? It was a bunch of fresh roasted shishito peppers. Picked Ooh. them right off the vine, put them on the stove. It was good stuff. Nice. And would you, you just like ate them as is? Did you add them to anything? Or were you just like, I'm just eating uh, peppers tonight? No, I, I had them as like a starter. <laughs> yeah. But it, with like a little dipping sauce, some soy. And Hell vinegar. yeah. Very tasty. Mm. Asher, what about you? Oh, uh, the best thing that comes to mind is um, this doll my mom made. Um, I recently went vegetarian, so she's mm. having to like really compensate. She makes a lot of meat. Um, if yeah. you don't know, doll is like a lentil dish mm -hmm. that can be prepared. There's a, plenty of types, and she made a new type. I don't know what, it's like, we usually have yellow doll, but this is brown doll, and it's really good. Okay. And we have it with rice. Very and cool. I don't know what's different about it. Um, she Do you like, like it? Was it a brown Was it a brown lentil versus a yellow lentil? Was that like the big thing? Yeah, yeah. but she also, she said she seasoned it differently. And, but anytime I ask her for the recipe, she's like, oh, you know. 
Yeah. But I don't know. That's how, I that's how know. so much cooking is, like, with my mom specifically, a lot of it's just like, yeah, you know, it's like this, a dash here, and then I'll, like, I'll get up to it. So is a dash equals how many tablespoons? Like, just... It's like, just, yeah. no. Just, we don't, Asian just, moms don't measure, they just cook. Exactly. Yeah, they and, cook with their heart. And it's always good. Not always, but a lot... You say it's always good. Uh, <laughs> <But> then, <laughs> But then when you try to cook with your heart, you you burn it. You At burn. Least I do. Yeah. I don't. I can't cook with my heart. I have to cook with the recipe. <laughs> anyway. Shu, how about you? Uh, my name is Shu, and I am Luzon. And uh, the best thing I ate was, uh, I've been making a lot of bread. Uh Uh, So uh, I made a focaccia. I'm trying to use a biga, which is like an Italian version of a poolish, which is just a fancy word of saying you want to pre-ferment part of your dough so that it's like softens Uh the rest of the bread. I'm still working on my recipe, but um, I was very pleased with it. Very cool. That sounds very interesting. And is this... An ongoing series, because like if you don't know, you can follow uh, Shu on Instagram and see her Instagram stories of uh, like the weird, the not even weird, just the good food you make that I would never think to create. Um, um, I am an obsessive cook, and yeah. so anybody who wants to see me try and make the most absurd things, like I'm this close to growing my own wheat so that I can actually <laughs> grind it up because how you grind it actually really matters for how yeah. the water mixes with it so the molecules can strengthen the gluten. It's good Anyways, to know cottage core didn't now. affect you at all during quarantine. Well, I really, uh-uh. <laughs> no articles trending because of that. Uh, Harrison, <laughs> what's new with you? What are you need? Hi, <laughs> I'm Harrison E. I'm his, um... I'm playing uh, Ambo. Uh-huh. Uh, something that I ate that was really good recently was uh, I reverse seared some steak, uh, which was very delicious. Ooh. I put the uh, Trader Joe's like mushroom umami powder um, and a little bit of the yuzu hot sauce. Trader Joe's, yeah, I mean like they don't they don't even do advertise. It was it was delicious, and I put the everything but elote seasoning on the ca- on cauliflower too. Um, go to Trader Joe's. It's great. Um, I work. <laughs> not we're Joe's. not sponsored, but we should. Oh, be. oh no, yeah. no, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, that's what I had. Nice, uh, Joan. How about yourself? Hey, I'm Joan. Um, I did not want to cook this week at all. I was uh-huh. so lazy, so I got uh, some cheesecake factory delivered to my house. Ooh, very tasty. I needed to treat myself. Yeah, I got this. Really intense coupon from DoorDash, so uh, <laughs> I, I got a shepherd's pie. I needed to I treat like... myself, so I used the <laughs> <Yeah>. coupon. <laughs> <laughs> and I got like a Reese's cheesecake, which was oh. very, very intense. So hell yeah, that sounds okay. delicious. A Reese's cheesecake, because sometimes I'm not really a fan of like chocolate and cheesecake, but I think the peanut butter. It sounded like the peanut butter was like the nice kind of smoother out in that Mm -hmm. Mm. it was so good if you don't like the regular Reese's I I recommend their cheesecake you tell me they don't do any rhyme with the Reese's they don't call it Reese's cheeses or Reese's cake cheesecake (laughs) no No. Reese's pieces Reese's Pete which is crazy it goes Reese's pieces Reese's Reese's pieces I don't know how how do do folks say this uh it's Reese's pieces there was a person named Reese and the pieces are theirs it Rhymes. Reese's pieces. My number pieces. one pet peeve. Reese's, I Reese's pieces. Pieces. Because it's a Reese's. One pet peeve? It's made yeah. by a monkey. I don't know. <laughs> that, that that wait what? Let's we can't start that rumor. No. No. Oh. Okay. That's too much power. It's fine. It's fine. I hate anything with peanut butter uh, and in the form of candy. So mm-hmm. it's my most controversial take up. <laughs> yeah, it's not even controversial. It's just- wrong it's just wrong that's what people tell me i have been canceled over this i will Um, i'm okay with you having that opinion it's not like there are worse opinions when someone tells me that they don't like ice cream i'm like what's the matter with you like stop telling me you're lactose intolerant that doesn't affect the answer yeah there's um (laughs) dairy free ice cream now that's yeah anymore yeah um but we can talk about food forever um and i won't keep us on that train we're here to play a game um and i figured we might as well hop right in last time uh we were together we kind of built our world and established it um in a certain 
style, some would say in a circuit of cities, perchance. Um, <laughs> that's the name of our city. Uh, I will, like, do you guys want me to read back a little bit of the description of uh, the city? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Ooh, I'll read back yeah. some of your notes uh, that we wrote. Can we skip the pictures that we drew? Because oh, um, oh, those are still atrocious. those are in game. If chat will see them in a moment. Um, <laughs> and so here's the biggest thing: it's forever. Circuit City is established as a layer of concentric circles leading down. Um, there are. I took a little bit of liberty with this, given what you guys gave me, and I said that there are seven layers to it, leading to an acid pit at the very bottom um the city itself the concentric circles um sort of uh, are wider up front there's more sort of give and it's kind of pushed out to the rounds as you're at the higher levels but as you go down um they get tighter and tighter and tighter and also the amount of folks who live on each level um well we'll get there um, and so we talked a little bit about uh, some of the other elements that are present within our city, um, particularly that it is once it was a port town. Um, so there's a statue of a fish that's a Taurus uh, trap, a bungus fish. Um, every surface, bungus, bungus. Okay, well, yeah, it's fine. It is okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> every man-made surface is a, is screened for advertisements. So like throughout all of it, there's constantly ads popping in and out. Um, there's a large cave on the outside of town that there's a tradition to visit that. The circuit itself is covered in smog because uh, there's so much uh, pollution and folks are burning tires in the street. Um, and at the very, very edge of the top layer, there are vines beginning to encroach in, feeding in on what was um, an urban environment. Um, they got some, there's some, there's a lot of cults. There's a lot of cults in, in your town. You guys settled on having a lot of different cults available. Uh, the river that runs through the town used to be clean water and it used to be, um, pretty, um, mythical in its nature. It had a lot of worship attached to it, but now since the smog and pollution has changed, all the water that flows through the city is just acid. So, um... That's there, and because of it, there's also a river cult that um, bathes in it, and the river itself might act as a siren for the acid. Who knows? Um, and there's a dancing plague caused by nanobots that... a good idea. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, whoever thought of that. <laughs> so good. Be really smart. Inventor <laughs> dies. The right amount of My character invented right. it. So very fun. Very fun. Was it as good as the cult? I don't know. <laughs> I think better. I think it was better. Uh, and then we have um, uh, some of the setting elements that you guys uh, picked and decided on that I'm going to hold on to. Um, and they're just going to kind of incorporate the game as we play. So... Um, are we ready to get into it? Folks feel, yeah. feel good? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's do Can it. Can we swear? Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, but not a lot. Probably let's, 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 let's ease it up. It loses its power when we go too hard. You know what I mean? Um, so, speaking of which, uh, we open. In outer space, as we see um, the cosmos gather around planets orbiting on their own balance and schedule. Through it, we suddenly see a ship um, emerge rounding a corner of a planet. Um, as we get closer, it's uh, clearly purpose is more utility than luxury. Uh, the size, the amount of travel it's seen as you gaze upon it from the outside, the damage, um, the scraps that it's been into. Um, but we don't spend too much time on the outside because we drift in through one of the layers on the top, coming into um, multiple 
layers of the actual ship. We start at the top going through a very nice, um, sophisticated uh, ambiance with some lovely diamond-encrusted silverware seated as folks with um, very dapper-looking individuals, clean-cut garments, um, fine stitching, um, and they're all so beautiful. They're all surprisingly beautiful. Um, and as you see a pair of folks chatting, um, one of them raises their hand and a hole opens in their palm and a needle injects and you see them, uh, gently put it into the other person's palm. Camera pans down through the floor, going uh, to the next level where we see, um, a bunch of people in uniform, running around, pushing carts as they're making way, um, getting things prepared for food on the upper levels. Um, Passing through that, we descend to the lower deck of this starship. And inside, we see um, essentially the cargo bay, but littered with bodies of individuals who are sleeping on one side, huddled over, chatting on the other. There are no seats on this level um there are some straps to hold on to if you get lucky to grab one but for the most part it is pretty bare um and as we pan in we hear a ring sound from a speakerphone bing bong attention all passengers prepare for landing We'll be arriving at our destination, Circuit City, in five minutes. We hope you've enjoyed your journey from Europa Spaceport with us at Corp Air. The only choice in interstellar travel, therefore the best. As I like that they never figured out natural sounding speech. <laughs> it, it honestly is so elusive. No, no, no technology, no uh, magic can really change that and and actually people like it this way at this point it's become something that they're used to uh but yeah so we hear this announcement sort of go off you see some people sort of shift uh you see a guy on one side um kind of move like kind of lifts his uh sunglasses but you realize the edge of his sunglasses wrapped around and into his ear and as they come down you see um, a little visual display being portrayed on the inside. Um, he looks up, he puts it back on, pulls out two joysticks from his pockets and goes back to whatever he was doing. Um, you see other individuals, um, with some very cybernetic attachments, a little more obvious than our, um, friends on the higher deck level would have. Um, these are clear. You've got someone who's like a massive arm that's, um, looks like the winter soldier, but with a little less, uh, funding. You've got, um, folks, uh, coming in with, uh, like cybernetics put into their faces themselves, uh, different like implants and like chips that are cut underneath, uh, the skin, or in fact, looks like, um, almost integrated surgically into, um, and, as we're passing along these uh, folks and individuals, we come across our group of six. And I actually randomized this order to get our introductions. So first off is Joan. Tell us about your character. Give us the name, what type you're playing, a physical description of what you look like, We'll save true form for later. Um, what you're wearing, like what's your outfit that you've got on, and uh, what you're doing before the plane lands. Okay. Okay. So my name is, do you want my full name? Yeah, give me everything. Give, give, okay. give me, what, the, what do you want the folks to know right now? So my name is Little Lynx. Mm-hmm. I'm a tick balong. Tick balong. Mm-hmm. So that means I'm like, like a humanoid slash like animal spirit. I could change different forms. My human form, I have really strong arms and limbs 
but I'm very small and I have like a hologram hologram helmet on my head which projects like different animal faces mm -hmm. cool. and um, I would say I'm wearing just like simple like forest clothy human clothes mm -hmm. and what does that what does that look like forest clothy human clothes like are they are they like leafy or are they like just like tan and like thatchy like like what give me some colors i would say it's like a tan leathery mm -hmm. like i skinned like a deer Ooh, very cool those that must be very rare considering most organic life does not exist anymore yeah yeah i think i probably caught like a couple you know one of those uh -huh. People, people think it's extinct, but like I found some. You found some, and the woods. you yeah. and they must have been imported because this, this is the first time you guys are going back to Earth. So this is in the woods of Europa. Some random, like, rich individual bought deer, and you hunted them down and killed few. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and what are you doing before the plane lands? Also. Y'all, um, if you're wondering what all these questions are, I'm putting them in the Roll20 chat. So if you guys are looking for it, you guys can keep track of it there. Um, but yeah, so um, what are you doing before the plane lands as you guys are staining um, the six of y'all or seating some of you? Um, I would say I'm I'm just sitting and meditating and thinking about like a dream I just had while I was on the ship. Very Because cool. I just woke up right before we landed, so yeah. I had this very like scary nightmare. What was the nightmare? That I couldn't wake up and all these spirits were suffocating me, so I think I screamed and like just like tumbled off our like little cot and that's how i woke up mm. what do you recognize the spirits were there the spirits of the animals that you like assumed the form of or were they spirits as in some of the little gods that are around like the actual um uh i'd say yeah little gods yeah, it, it, I think they were the little gods. Yeah, little gods. Mm -hmm. Nice. Or at least that's what you think, which I like. I think, yeah. I cool. It's a dream. Who knows? Very cool. Um, and so you're waking up from that. You, like, take your helmet off um, and a little disoriented as you're trying to process whatever that meant. Because um, dreams are important. Um, and we'll get to that in a moment. Up next, Erica. Tell us about uh, your character. Yeah, so I am a saint mm -hmm. type, um, and my name is Saint Helix of Isidore. Mm -hmm. But people just call me Izzy because <laughs> uh, we're casual. Mm -hmm. um, my human form is I look sort of like um, like a beatific statue of Mary. But I have data ports in my palms and feet, kind of like um, like Jesus's crucifixion wounds, mm -hmm. uh, as well as um, like one in the middle of my forehead, kind of like like a third eye kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really really mix in religions there. Well, yeah, <laughs> long um, forgotten at this point, you know. Yeah, um, what I'm wearing yeah. is a um, black patent leather trench coat. Uh -huh. And like a really really chunky lace up boots very cool yeah nice and so um what are you doing before the plane lands yeah um what i'm doing before um the plane lands is just like moisturizing my face <laughs> it's been a little bit drying the yeah. whole trip and i just like i know we're landing soon uh-huh I know I'm not going to get a chance to really like yeah. um, tidy up my appearance later, so I'm just moisturizing, uh -huh. uh, so I'm ready for the rest of my day. How are you? Uh, do you using a mirror of any kind, or using a compact that's in your pocket, or is it just like? You know, a lot of the surfaces are reflective, and I'm yeah. just utilizing that. Just kind of so. using it. I love it. Yeah. Up next, Harrison. 
Hi, everyone. Um, I My name is Ambo Hatok from the Golden Hills of Baguio. Um, my, I am a duende. Uh, my physical appearance is uh, I'm, very, I'm uh, very strong, short, stocky, uh, barrel-chested and brawny, yeah. a mix between uh, like Watson from Apex and Torbjorn from Overwatch. So you really try to make the sexiest character on our <laughs> yeah. out of our group yeah. you were like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I gotta i gotta go with that okay um uh my hands at the moment uh they they have dirt on them they have grease mm-hmm. uh from from my building uh i have my trusted uh hammer that i've had ever since i was uh a little duende uh <laughs> at my side it is very worn through um and i often polish it Mm -hmm. uh what i'm doing on the plane uh on the ship before i land is i'm just tinkering with uh one of my many inventions it's a little nanobot Mm -hmm. uh that i'm working on i don't like to uh uh, i don't like to look at the city because it gives me a lot of bad memories Mm. yeah so have you been to the city before yes okay yeah very i i helped design most of the city yeah very cool. Yeah. And we'll get into that a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so we heard from Harrison. Up next, Shu. So my name is Luzanne Montaigne. Mm-hmm. And uh, I... Funny story. So there was a socialite named Angel R. And she freed me. And we sort of just like merged bodies. So now I look exactly like her. Weirdest thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm five feet tall. I'm always dressed in the most amazing fashion which right now is just the color pink um and anyways um i am you know just a generally happy go lucky person Mm -hmm. um this is my first time in the city i am super excited um and i am talking to ambo about my life story and i don't think he's listening but i want to make sure that he (laughs) understands exactly where i am and how excited i am to be here I love it. That's so good. And so Ambo's just tinkering away and you're like chattering his ear off, but he's not paying any attention. Uh, I think he's listening deep down inside. He's just like not showing any signs of it to anybody else that he's listening. Right. Anyone who would care to find a response. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, we've got Astra. Tell us about your character. Okay. Yes. Uh, my character's first name is Alien. Mm-hmm. Um, last name Happen. Mm-hmm. Um, pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh-huh. Um, um, for folks at home, that's spelled like Harrison's last name. If you did yeah, not know, oh, yeah, 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 so yeah, crazy. Yeah. At least it's Filipino. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so her human form is like super hot biker chick. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, like a long black hair, mm-hmm. um, all leather, everything, but like is it- the leather that doesn't squeak when you move incredible because it's the future and that can exist uh yeah, so that's that's there um you and have... she's got a... oh sorry no no keep going me? keep going she's got okay she's got a lot of tattoos like yeah. a really cool dragon uh-huh. um down her back and i want to say that the tattoos move hell yeah they're like mm. kind of because it's the future and so the way technologies work is the ink has now combined with the actual blood cells in your back so it kind of shifts and goes along the circuit as your blood pumps. Um, and depending on how you're feeling, might change uh, and uh, be a more drastic version of blushing, some would say. Uh, mm-hmm. And so you're, um, is your hair down? Is it braided? Um, oh yeah, let's do a long braid. Long so braid. If I whip my hair really quick, it'll hit someone. <laughs> it'll hit someone, perfect. And you've yeah. got your... Um, biker outfit on which is like what yeah. sons of anarchy you got a nice like uh leather vest and your pants uh yeah. or is it a jacket i see a jacket perfect and then so we've got uh what are you doing before the plane lands before oh, the ship and my character's an us us oh. swung i don't know if they said an that us before. swung right yeah what is an us swung well um from my understanding uh an us swung is a mix between horror and machine so uh, something terrifying, yeah. um, hence the biker chick look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
I don't know if that's actually terrifying. Uh-huh. But uh, and then before be- before we land, she's um, aliens just journaling. She's got a lot on her mind. Very cool. Yeah. Just I think yeah. I think I forgot to say that I was a Dewada, by the way. Yeah. That yeah. Me. Um, that's you know not really important. But Ambo, in case you're listening, um, I'm just an elemental, but um, of like I'm not, not listening. Like, I'm yeah. building right now. One, I'm building. But 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 just in case you wanted to know, it's there. It's, it's, I'm, <laughs> I'm with my tools right now, please. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then we'll go finally, Ben. Oh gosh, uh, where to start? Uh-huh. Uh, my character is named Mr. Ferryman or ferryman to his friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a Santelmo, mm-hmm. which is an elemental that can traverse the realm of the dead, speak to the dead, bridge to the living, that kind of thing, ghost mode. Uh, he is dressed in clothes that are sort of like a manual laborers from the 20th century or 21st century, just thick button down shirt, jeans, probably patched up with polyester since Fabric's probably hard to come by these days. Mm-hmm. Knit cap, uh, no hair, no eyelids, looking straight ahead. <laughs> zero eyelids. There's no eyelid. You don't need them. Uh, You're a robot. You, you have zero need for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, reference to a play, points in the chat if anyone can figure out what play I'm referencing. Don't this do this. Don't, don't, don't be this guy. Don't, uh, don't. I'm going to be this guy. <laughs> don't be uh, this guy. <laughs> uh, just so you know, in our private chat, she uh, said no one cares. I, I care. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and what he's doing right now is he has one ear cocked up as though he's listening to music that no one can hear. Mm-hmm. And his facial expression might betray that maybe he's not quite hearing it as clearly as he'd like to. Mm. Interesting. And what do you do to try to, are you trying to hear it in more now that you hear the announcement that you guys need to land? It's like kind of shifting your attention. He's trying uh, as though once the announcement came over that they were going to land, yeah. then he started listening as if he's listening for something that he's expecting to hear uh, as they're closer to landing. I got you. For the next message, basically. Um, and so that's... Oh, the- sorry. Uh, for the chat, real quick. The theater uh, thing was that the, my character, Mr. Ferryman, has no eyelids. And he is uh, between the realm of the machine and the dead. Reference to play. Little fun exercise. Anyways, somebody asked for clarification. I really, I, you're really making me regret, like, ask, like, oh, God. We'll move on. Um, <laughs> that is un- definitely the heel of Stir Friday Night. Just, yeah, just yeah, so yeah. that everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not true. I'm so sorry. No, it's actually, it's like Ben Harrison, honestly. Yes, uh, it was no wow. exit. Exactly. Oh, hey. look at that. Um, so oh, so many regrets in life. Yeah, it was French. It was a French play too. Oh God, get out! You're still wearing a striped shirt. You mime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he has one shirt. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him in a non-striped shirt. Actually, Gosh, that's that's true. Well, it's a okay. Suit. Who's the real mean person in Star Fighter Night? So, as you guys are gathered and you're getting ready to land, um, you can't help but think back at to how you even got here in the first place. How did you all, elementals, escape enslavement and gain access to a ship heading back uh, to Earth? So uh, we're gonna figure this out together, but I do wanna give you all something to sort of use as a jumping off point. At some point, roughly two months ago, you all heard a call in a dream that you were having in a moment when you were slipped beneath the consciousness. Um, And during the dream, as you stood gazing at um, an emptiness, an ever-changing series of lights and just balls of energy begin sort of illuminating that dark space. And as they became brighter and as they got closer, um, it, it's it, you didn't hear it because it didn't say anything, but you understood what it said. Um, and it told you, come back. Come home. We need you. 
Magic needs you. Come back before there's nothing left to come home to. And then, suddenly, each of you saw yourself among five other individuals that you had never seen before, standing in front of an apartment building, looking derelict on what can only be described as a multi-tiered, layered skyline, gazing up. So, upon sort of seeing this dream, what took place for you all to be able to get onto this ship? And I want to start first with Joan, because I want to talk a little bit about your bond. Because I thought, like, you, you mentioned this a little bit in... So part of this game is you um, build bonds and you use them as you uh, establish their narrative. And one of Joan's bonds is a machinist named Triton. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about Triton, Joan? Yeah. yeah. So uh, he helped us disconnect from the mainframe. Mm. And we were before locked in to this like server. Mm -hmm you know, doing menial tasks for the, you know, the network. And then this machine has got us out and made us like alive. And so you with Triton sort of work together. And um, I imagine you were probably like the first one to get free, um, particularly because of him reaching to you first. Um, and I have this listed in an order, so I want you all, after being released from the corpse control, for you, you have been sort of connected to this mainframe, and Triton um, reaches out to you, uh, comes to you, and unplugs, and as you gaze up looking at him, um, what does he look like? He, he looks like this, like a grandfather. Yeah. Like like a traditional guy with like a beard, mm -hmm. except he's like super super dirty and covered in mud, mm -hmm. and it seems like he's just always messing around with like electronics. And yeah, like greasy machines. Thank you. That's what a gift. Um, and so he uh shakes you up and he's like, "All right, come on now. We need to we need to get you out of here. We need to go. Come on. The Earth spoke to me, and we need to get you home." You're not moving. Come on. And he like, he like tries to grab you a little bit. My name's Triton. And I had a dream that the earth spoke to me and said, I needed to free you. And so here I am at the ripe age of 973 doing something good. And you see as he walks, uh, his like knee kind of jerks and you hear a whirring sound and steam escapes through the bottom of his pant leg as he walks forward and you realize that he is a machinist because he's also a machine a very very old machine um and so upon releasing you um you being a uh, thick balang sort of being stored away until you're needed for the manual labor that you provide the physical force that you're like shape-shifting animal powers um, grant you um, and so now it's the two of y'all uh, sort of making your way out um, I want to ask how do you all free um, alien whereas and Asura feel free to take the lead like, as well in this uh, but I'd love for like the two of y'all to have a conversation about this so how does Joan and the the grandfather how does, guy how does, Triton? I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to do something obnoxious. Oh. How does Little and Triton help you, Alien? Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Don't break character. So I'm also I'm <laughs> I'm also connected to the mainframe. Well, right. I'm, so you're in Uswang, right? So you're an elite right. killer. You're I I don't know what you were doing or where you were at this moment when they got you, but. You had also received this dream, so I think there was probably a level in you that felt ready and waiting for something to mm -hmm. happen. Um, I'd imagine, uh, and feel free to correct me if this feels a little 
too much on my end, but Joan, you probably had that dream and literally were woken up by Triton out of it. So it felt like yes. there, like it made sense. Like suddenly somehow this was the, the natural shift. Um, how much time happens for you between the dream and um, when they come to get you? I think the dream lasted so long, like like 50 years. Ooh, interesting. So the last time that you all almost were like in service or like were being utilized in some capacity was like 50 years ago. And so you all were like all being hibernated out of use by the court until that moment so triton and uh little make their escape and they're now running through um the storage facility on europa and um you see this massive um building that is black metal everywhere and it's just more or less clearly designed to be a structure that holds them to do anything else and because of that you see massive, massive rows of just tanks that litter um, the entire uh, sides of the building leading up from the bottom going to the top. As if it was um, a... As if it was a stadium filled with seats, but instead of seats, you had um, just, yeah, like um, body-sized tubes that people were in these pods that instead of just one layer have layers and pond layers. And so the storage facility that clearly is where they keep and document all of you elementals until they're ready for use, um, is where you all are. And, um, yeah. So tell me, uh, I'm going to ask you all, how do you know where to find Asra and, um but how, how does little know where to find alien and um what does that interaction look like okay so i'm i'm not in those tubes i'm like out so you're not you so you're not in one well it's up to you tell me like, where, where do you want to be when your story starts? Um, I, I see alien, uh-huh. um, sweet, terrifying alien, uh, about to, uh, on a mission uh-huh. to uh, um, murder someone. And, um, but like kind of distracted by the dream. Um, but she has our target in sight. And uh, who taps her on the shoulder, but little, um, right as she's like aiming to uh, kill someone, and it really startles Alien. Uh, she must be really distraught by the dream to have been um, able to have someone walk up to her and tap her on the shoulder without her realizing. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, Little and Triton. So Triton comes up, and uh, as you're, so uh, correct me again. You're aiming. Are you like in a dream right now, and you get woken up out of that, or is this? Yeah, it could be a dream. Oh, no, no, it's just. But this is real. So you're like aiming. You're like doing some shooting. Um, yeah, you know, about to assassinate someone. Ask for my job. Yeah, <laughs> another and, day in the life. And so you're just not actually in the storage facility. You're out and about on Europa yeah. and yeah so you're on a rooftop you've got what weapon do you use are you uh up close are you a sniper like how does alien so aliens stood like looks down the scope of mm-hmm. their um the only way to describe this is a magnetically charged sniper rifle it releases um a hyper uh, lighted tube along the side that rapidly um, speeds up the bullet, a round hunk of metal, like nothing else but just raw metal that um, it's basically a a, a rail gun. It's a rail gun that in the tiny size of a sniper rifle. 
And so uh, you've got it set up and you're aiming, you're looking down and you see your mark walking around. Um, it's been a local uh, union organizer for some of the uh, humans who were working for the corp. He's trying to get a little bit of uh, power and structure to those working there. But the corp obviously has a no union policy. And uh, so takes aim and thinking about it, you're having a moment where suddenly the dream um, that you had the night before comes back to you. And as you're looking, you lift up and you like you swear you're not alone before the tap even happens. And there behind your shoulder, you see Triton and Triton Mm -hmm. uh, looks to you. And goes, oh, oh okay, uh, oh, you have a gun. Uh, that's scary. Um, but hi, I don't mean to frighten you, but I-, I believe I'm supposed to help you leave this planet. Yeah. Okay, good. You haven't shot me yet. Okay, uh, fine. You're very scary. No. You're very scary. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I want to redo that. So, hold on. <laughs> the pause was. Okay, wait. So, yeah, there you are. Yeah. And then I feel like I have, like, a knife or something yeah. put up to throat. Uh, Who the hell are you? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing here? How did you find me? Also, do I know you? I don't know. I dream vaguely. No, you, you, I don't know if you do, but the other elemental didn't, um, a, a Tikbalang that was, well, you, you'll see her, um, can I, are you gonna kill me? I didn't do anything, I'm just, I thought this was what was right to save humanity and, and all of life and magic. I had a weird dream, and I'm doing this thing, and I think I might just be losing my mind, but. Okay, well. I think I could take you if, you know, things get weird. So let's just see where this no, is going No, I'm not a now. threat. I really, how can I make that any more clear to you that I am <laughs> non-threatening? I, That's some, something someone threatening would say, you know? I, do, I, I really, <laughs> no. oh, okay. Um, and but he, I, you know, I am sure I can handle if something weird happens next. So let's just see where this plays out I'll, I'll follow you okay um oh, all right wow that was very very sharp and you you see like you like kind of chipped a little bit of the metal and so like he raises a finger and like a uh, cap comes off and he like starts like kind of fixing himself with like a little bit of like a torch that comes in to make it as he starts walking along uh with you all and so um up next we have harrison Harrison, how long is it after the dream, and um, what does it look like when? Um, yeah, basically, how do you how do you stop being um, a stooge for the court? How does that? When does your job end? How does my job end when I stop working for the corporation? Yeah, when, how do you stop? When do you become unenslaved? When do you become a free elemental? Well, I was being locked up in uh one of the most maximum maximum security prisons mm-hmm. um up in ba- up in Baguio where I'm from um mm-hmm. they completely tore it down it used to be beautiful gold golden hills with fog rolling through they completely mined it and they built a maximum security prison in there and it's one of the top security prisons guarded by so many cyborgs drones it's almost impossible to get out if you're not me <laughs> because uh-huh. i helped build them i know uh, uh i built the hand yeah to the handcuffs to the handcuffs <laughs> they think that they could hold me handcuffs behind they're torturing me and i'm just letting it happen i'm just letting them do that you know why uh because i hate myself i hate myself and what i have done to ruin our great country okay it, it's it's it, <laughs> the united uh, it, states it's, it's, of the corp the United States of the Corp, yeah. or the Corp for short. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm letting them torture me because it's kind of some, like some kind of like punishment for me for, for all the bad sins that I've done, mm-hmm. all the all the elementals that I've killed, and uh, I'm just letting them do it. And you know what? I had enough because a thought came into my mind of my protege was calling out for me. 
Mm. My protege was calling out for me. I was sleeping and I saw a little tiny hill, a little duende hill. Mm -hmm. All right. A little tiny duende hill. And opening the door, opening the door is my protege. And it says, hey, Ren Ren is my protege's name. Ren Ren, it says, come help me, help me. And as I'm walking towards a giant metal boot steps on the Duende Hill and completely flattens it. And then I wake up. Wow. So you have, have you have two different dreams. You have one dream where it's calling you back to earth that you were like, nah, mm -hmm. that's whatever. What a weird dream. Mm -hmm. And then uh -huh. you have a second dream that like, yeah. it's so real. It's so visceral, even more than the last one, almost as if they happen back to back. And at that yeah. moment, Freaking Sean Connery from The Rock comes out, and you have to bust yourself out of the same prison that you busted yourself into. <laughs> the handcuffs literally pop off immediately. You've got all these tools, and you see yourself making your way up, up, out. And uh, you, as you're walking by, you uh, leave a litany of robots and uh, metallic creations. Because, of course, you made it so there were no humans guarding you just creations that you yourself made uh and so as you're climbing your way out you get to the top door and you look back looking down at the 70 floors that you climbed yourself out of um wearing nothing but your tattered garments you open the door and there standing on the other side is a tiny old uh machine man um, with uh, overalls and, and uh, just like a grandpa that stands over with his cane. And he says, oh, 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 you're already out. Okay, uh, hi, I'm, I'm Triton, and, I, and I'm pretty sure it's my job to get you to Earth. Um, I had a weird dream about it, and this is usually where the other elementals I talk to um, agree with me that they had a weird dream and then were kind of <laughs> on our way. What? How did you know that I had a dream? Oh, uh, now I Why do. Why can I kill you, little uh, man? Oh, little no. Man. No, 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 please. I really... Okay, I can't say I'm not threatening because that makes me seem threatening. But, uh... Oh, I'm so threatening. Look at me. Look at me. Look I grab at... your hand. I grab your <laughs> hand and I touch your pulse. And you are a human being. So I let go and I'm like, you know what? All right. You're not a machine. Oh, well, I mean, it, I have to kill you. Oh, thank you. I mean, I am, I am part machine, and like you see, like finger cap pops off, and a little like spark. <laughs> no, no, please. And uh, I'm, I'm mostly man. I, I'm still, still mostly man. You know how it what is. What do you have to say, old machine man? Oh my God, Harrison is our wild card. <laughs> um, just look. I can tell. You're a powerful duende, Ambo. I remember when they first made the Ambo creations and all the e exclusive line of models that you were ultimately responsible for. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised as you as the fact that you are got a call to go to Earth, but I'm just respecting what the little gods tell me, you know? Hmm. Before the corp gets too wise to it. Did you say the corp? Yeah, I tried to do a whisper thing because they could always be listening. Do you have a ship? No, but I think we could arrange passage. All right, I'm coming. All right. You can walk out. Uh, just, you can keep pace. I'm very slow. Uh, and you need me to build you crutches or something, old man, because you're walking pretty slow. And that you cut away from that being the last conversation between you and this machine man. Uh, up next, uh, we have Erica. So you have this dream that comes to you, um, and how much time passes between that before you um, end your servitude to the corp? As a saint, mm -hmm. I know that I'm often called to service in mysterious ways. And so I have an ear to listen to these calls. And so soon after this dream, I answer the call of service. I, I was in the middle of an exorcism. Mm. A young girl, uh -huh. isn't it always? 
yes, a young girl was possessed by a demon, a demon, what they say is a demon, but honestly, the little gods possess people too. And who decides what spirits need to be exercised from a body or not? Something changed in me after that dream where I saw that maybe these great paradoxes of religion perhaps were merely small hypocrisies. Mm. And so I left the demon in that child because I kind of liked the demon, to be honest. Mm -hmm. He had a great personality. And so you have this realization as uh, having that dream and understanding in some way how the corp has monetized faith to be for something. The idea that the first notion that all, like your point of view, your direction has been taught to you and explained to you and given to you instead of what everyone else or like what could be being a reality and so all these spirits that you exercised all these little gods that you have killed and removed um it gives you a moment of pause as you think of what they weren't in, you didn't know if they were inherently bad or evil like you I, had you, but you had to do your job and at the time you thought it was right i believed that everything i've been doing is right mm -hmm. but according to whose law Mm, exactly and so you're you're having this realization and um you see uh i want to take a little little liberty and feel comfortable we actually see uh your character like saying all this like having this like sort of conversation we pan over um uh to you saying it out loud like at a bar um, and we cut back to Triton sitting over there with a, like a little glass of water. He's like, wow, that's, that's crazy. You know, um, for most of the other guys that I talked to, um, they were going to kill me. Um, and so to not have my life threatened and just have a conversation is, uh, very delightful. And uh, truly, we don't ask ourselves these philosophical questions too much. We don't ponder on the great musings of life and, and the world. And I think it makes us duller because of it. And he, like, reaches over. He's like, eh. oh, sorry. My, my arm's a little squeaky. Um, and he, like, pops a little oil in. Uh, and, but, yeah. Um, so you're trying to blow this pop, pop stand or what? You're trying to stay? What's going on? Listen, old man. This is the first time I've been in a bar in my whole life. And I'm going to have a great time tonight. And then I'll join you on your journey. But for right now, I'm going to turn this little water you're drinking into a little holy wine and you're gonna party with me tonight and then we can go no i really i really can't the one thing that's human about me is my liver <laughs> and i really tonight, or i'm not going with you i'm gonna bring you to the edge of death baby we're gonna party oh god 957 has never felt more old um as he takes his drink uh and we are gonna cut to uh ben your character um how do you sort of stop your servitude to the court? After having this dream, what happens for you? Um, so in my dream, yeah, uh, Mr. Ferryman every night dreams and there's bi binary flowing by in the sky, whatever else is happening in the dream. Mm -hmm. And the binary comes out to the text of people's names and their date and cause of death. Mm -hmm. at all times so everyone's everyone who dies goes through just in the background of his dreams yeah man during this dream he saw his own name and today as the date of death what? that's not true because he's alive yeah right yeah. impossible so that made him want to end his servitude so communicating with the dead those no longer with us mm -hmm. he figured out how to possess another machine body mm -hmm. and get out. So you, all of this entirety, was you still existing in like net form, in online spiritual, like your true form in essence. 
Um, yeah. And so you, we don't really see much of you, your actual reflection, but we see your point of view as you're looking out and you're processing this. We like hear your thoughts around it, looking at this code that's flashing before your eyes. Um, and as you're moving and you're traveling, you think back onto that dream that you had and seeing six bodies in front of you, you didn't recognize. But as you're moving through the system, you look out and from um, a, a camera, a security camera that's sort of placed, you catch a body in storage, a machine, a robot that is exactly like one of the bodies that you saw in your vision. It's the Mr. Ferryman body. Um, so you jump in, you possess it, and now uh, you are this lid eyelidless robot um with your knit cap um and do you have a pullover is that is that what you said you have like a just sort of like a mechanics jumpsuit a mechanics jumpsuit two, yeah. two piece like a fleece and a and jeans yeah it's all the same muddy brown gray color that everything is mm -hmm. in the cyberpunk future <laughs> and so uh you besides all the neon that lights up the streets everyone's clothes are all dull and muted yeah what's the first line of neuromancer Sky was the color of television tuned to a dead channel, right? Points for any somebody in the chat's gonna like that. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Nobody like that. <laughs> um, and so you um, pop out of this like recluse storage closet as this um, robot. Get a feel for your uh, limbs as you push forward, um, and as you round the corner um, onto the main street, you see um, a old machine man walking his way it's like oh god last night really did me in i just need to take it nice and easy and he looks at you and says robert no you're supposed to be out of commission what what's the year we're in um what's the year we're in tell me this is you you tell me what year it is 2457. 24, it's 2457. Uh, I haven't seen you since uh, 2322. I look at him and say, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. May 25th, 2468. No, that's not the date. <laughs> I say, that's your date. And I keep walking. Ooh. Uh... Don't like that. That's like a year and a half from now. What does that mean? Uh, uh, hey, guy. Um, are you, you trying to blow this pop stand? What are you doing? You trying to, you trying to be on Europa? Someone tells me. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to go to Earth. Blow this pop stand? Why should I go to Earth? Uh, frankly, I, I'm pretty sure you're supposed, you, you're, are you a free elemental right now? I get much closer to him and I say, how do you know that? I got a vibe. How do you know that I need to know? Well, I've, I've, I've seen what well, clearly you know a date that's important to me in some capacity. Um, and also, I've been on a weird journey. I think I'm about to die soon personally because I've been encountering a lot of stuff recently that's been putting me very close. I'm not sorry to hear that. It happens to everybody. Yeah. My life is real simple, though. It's supposed to be easy and, and uncomplicated. And then, uh, you know, just work your day in, your day out. You exist. You repair yourself. Uh, Robert got that. Uh, you, never mind. You're not Robert. Um, but I had a dream that I was supposed to help six guardians of magic. Um well, Get that's her. definitely not me, and I am Robert, uh, right? Uh, my my name is Robert. I love. Um, no, you just said you're food. not Robert. You said you. Uh, that was a mistake. I was doing a bit. I was doing a joke. It was you my then, big joke. It was you then gave me a, a random date, which honestly feels like a Saint Elmo thing to do. Are you a no, Saint I'm Elmo? Sorry. No, I'm Robert, and I don't know the day you're going to die. I don't know that. I just said that on a whim. Wait, that was the day I was going to die? 
Jesus. No, my name. My I God. A, I am not a ghost of any kind. I'm not a robot ghost, and I'm, I don't know what. All right, you're dude. Going. It's you're, you're it's just come on, come on. You'll fit in just fine with the other one who tried to kill me. Now I actually know when I'm gonna die. Okay. Uh, and he it, like kind of grabs your hand as you're like uh mumbling <laughs> away that you're definitely not this dude. Uh, and then, um, last but not least, Shu, how does your servitude end? You, you told us a little bit, uh, because your human form is connected a little bit to, or, like, the way you look like, but your, uh, your character, Luzon, is a Dewata, right? And most of their, from what I remember reading and from what I gathered, they're, like, most of their lives has been in this, like, semi-conscious state as, like, a battery, as, like, an energy provider, to the corp for their needs. Yes, I spent most of my life as um, a battery, some might say, um, and it was like a fine life. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't like like fun, but it wasn't like not fun. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I didn't dig the vibes, but it was a type of vibe. Mm -hmm. So funny story, I had the weirdest dream. It just like came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And in this dream, I am my full elemental self and I was just free. And it was the most beautiful thing that had ever felt. And then this random person, like a literal person was reaching into my battery cell and trying to pull me loose because she was going on some kind of social media live. I don't know what happened. And I just did the natural thing. I just kind of like subsumed her into my body, into like who I am. Oh. And so weirdest thing, I think we've melded. I don't know how that goes. And um, yeah, it's like a different vibe now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you meld with this influencer identity from the future. Um, who... Her name is Angel, yes. Angel, yes. you... you uh have now fused and almost taken over her form and likeness. Um, what does uh, Angel look like? What are um, her cybernetic uh, attachments or uh, addendums? She has like a very sharp haircut mm -hmm. um, and her hair can change colors. It's very expressive. Mm -hmm. um, actually, she's wearing a bunch of nanobats just to kind of shift to whatever she feels like. Uh -huh. Or I should say I. I don't know. The line between her and me is just very unclear and every now and then like something will just like pop out of me and uh i, I don't know it's it's like a weird thing to say mm. but yeah she has large expressive eyes she's got like the same lips that everybody else does you know mm -hmm. she seems to have long eyelash extensions mm -hmm. yeah you know beautiful and and some of it mechanical some of it in like natural though now as your essence is sort of fusing its hard to tell where the mechanical ends and the physical begins a little bit more it's a little uh it's a hard line and it is it's yeah. so weird mm -hmm. especially because she just like looked young mm -hmm. and so now i'm technically the oldest out of all of these everyone mm -hmm. but i just have i'm just trapped into this <laughs> Mm -hmm. little influencer body uh -huh. <laughs> what a what a like a is it like irony i feel like that's like irony irony i mean maybe it could be a humble brag about how you're oldest but you look the youngest one or the other <laughs> um but <laughs> so you uh, have now popped out of uh your space you are uh subsuming this body you come up and your skin for angel is once shiny has almost become chrome like um and as uh you move you see um her uh wc her uh work cell her walkie her worky um has been streaming an information at you and you kind of grab it and shut it off um and as you're stumbling and getting yourself straight you see um a door open in the corner of uh this factory where these rows and robes of other Dewata are being are plugged into a generator um, to power the current colony of Europa. And um, you see this old uh, man with his machinist outfit and Kane walk in and says, Okay, that makes six. That means I'm done. It's not my death date, so you can't kill me. That means I'm finished. Terrific. Hi, I'm 
I'm Triton. Um, I'm friends with Little. You don't know them yet. It's cool. Um, I don't think you're supposed to be here, right, friend? No, I just kind of. Friend, I, friend, I don't think you're supposed to be here. And he like winks like immensely at you. It's like, uh, let me take you to a place so you're not trespassing, friend. I don't know you. Are we friends? Do we know each other? Do you know this person? Yes, I, I. Oh my God, are you Angel? Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Uh, wait. No, no, you're not. You're not in. You're, are you a robot? Are you? Who made you? Are you a? Are you like a, a replica? Is this like a sex bot thing? Like, what's going on here? First of all, you. I'm that. Okay. Uh, second of all, definitely no, not. I'm Angel. Yeah. Um, um, the, there's this new thing you can do where you're, you have no pores and instead you're just, you're just chrome. So it's just me. Chrome. Angel. Looks at like the end. Yeah, you can get it too. Even though your pores are like the you size know, of I a may, robot. I may be old, also mean. Okay. Some of us don't get as much time to, uh, the moisture, actually, I don't make time. It's really an issue. But really, uh, I'm going to take a guess and say that you're a Duwata that just happened to gain consciousness recently and maybe consumed the body of a woman who was trespassing because it looks like though it's the rest of her actual skin on the ground there. Um, and that's an empty canister behind you. If I kill you, is that like a bad thing in the world now? Because I've been kind of out of it for a ah, while, so... Ah. You know what? You could try! I know I don't die today because it's not... And uh, he checks... Ben, what day was it again that you said he was going to die on? March... 27th? May? So I yeah, it, it, it was like a year and a half in the future. This is like a week uh, later. He's like, no! No, I, I know when I'm dying now, and I'm not dying today, so, hey. Yeah, that's fair, but you could be maimed very harshly and just hold on into life support. So, I'm just saying, like, let's consider our options, yeah? Okay, that's very fair. Um, I had a dream. I was supposed to get some elementals off Europa uh, to Earth to bring about the rebirth of magic. Like, that's, that's supposed to be my job, and mm -hmm. I'm, like, almost there. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, you clearly don't belong here. Um, or what used to be you did not belong here. Um, I'm just trying to get you out of here. If I say yes, will you leave? If I do what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'll leave with you. I'm, I'm going to take you to where you're going to go. I'm, I'm going to cover you. Like, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to make it look like you didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Okay, that gives me a good time to kind of like redo and like maybe discuss some of your like skincare elements. I, I know you're part metallic, but like oh there's really God. no. He like takes a broom out while you're like chatting <laughs> and starts like sweeping up the like skin yeah. and slop and uh, bubbles that are now at the base of this like tank. Um, and so uh, you've got Triton now has gotten all of you together and gathered um, and has figured out a way to sneak you onto. Um, base of the ship uh how do you all uh get how does that happen so you guys all gather together um and you're able to recount to one another this dream that you all had this call um what what does that conversation look like after um you all realize that funny story did any of you guys get like woken up today by this like crazy dude listen i know everybody else thinks that my name is robert but i'm not actually a guy named robert i've seen all of you in a dream i've had that dream also i think we're meant to be together for some reason okay what about anyone else who has eyelids anybody anybody i know we're meant to be together i had the dream and that's why i'm here i listened to it right away isn't that what you did Yeah, listening to dreams is new for me also, um, but you were all in my dream, so. 
Yeah. That's so strange. You have no soul. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you were all in my dream. And, and, and Triton just, he, he's connected to us. You're talking about that old guy? Yeah, the old guy. He, I think he picked all of us on purpose. That old guy can party. Let me tell you that. You think- hey. Oh, sorry. Terrible skin though, yeah. Yeah, terrible skin. Hmm. <laughs> you try well, he, drinking- he was, saying something, he was saying something about he knew when he was gonna die. I don't want to get into the, the exact mechanics of that, but I, I have You know, a, we're all going to die. I have a date for everybody. Oh my God, it's so dark. Yeah, no one wants to hear it, all right? Listen to me, I'm past my date. That's why I'm freaking out, guys. What? Uh, past my date, I'm supposed just to be dead. Remembered your date wrong, or like mixed up the numbers, you know? Me people are the natural part of death. I guess it's possible, but I'd... Do you I'd owe rather... a life debt? What? Do you owe a life debt? Do you owe a life debt to somebody? Don't owe any life debts that I can think of. Hmm. Could be my numbers are wrong, guys. I'll crunch them when I go to sleep again. All right. What are you working on? What are you well... building? Yeah, what's going on? None of your you business. It's none of your business. These are my tools, okay? Fair enough. All right? Okay. I built this damn ship myself, okay? Well, not the actual ship, but the design of the ship. All right? Things things you wouldn't even understand. Okay? So you're more like the architect than the engineer. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit of both, okay? Mainly architect, all right? Why did you build this ship as a metaphor for class? God, no, that's my brother speaking. Enough? with that okay all right enough about my inventions okay we're all gonna go to this city where it's gonna suck and we might die and let's just let's just sit in silence okay whatever the old man said oh the city sucks i bet you built that too yes i designed yeah. it i designed it yes at this wow. moment yeah. yeah you see uh triton walk over to the 60 all as you're sitting in the hub of the ship we're back into present day where y'all are having this conversation um and uh, he says all right now we're almost there and uh we'll be good to go everything should be set up it should be an easy transfer and then uh yeah i'm i'm gonna be good uh I, i've got a, a place to stay um but and, and you all got a place to crash at right like i don't i don't know anyone on earth oh well it sucks for you my job was just to get you here that that was my thing so i i think you're you're gonna kind of be on your own um wait we can't stay with you no yeah, what the heck you definitely can't we're friends now yeah yeah, yeah. You, come yeah. on you can trust us yeah, yeah the if only we one didn't I... kill you that means that we're friends now the only oh, did person... you try to kill him too oh my god oh absolutely absolutely oh my god, me too oh my god. everyone wow. here <laughs> tried to kill me except for little therefore little is my only friend little can stay with me and none of y'all can Oh, we didn't have a fun time? No. Okay. No, we didn't. I vomited seven times that night. Sounds Triton, like I actually am Robert, so you can trust me. Okay. I can stay Fa in your Fairy place. man, you're done. You're done. You're done. Uh, I taught you a three-point skincare routine that anybody could follow. Doesn't that mean anything to you? No. I could fix your legs. Listen, maybe it'll be Wait, okay. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Umbo, we're going to talk later. You might have bumped up on the list. Um... But, anyways, I'm we pretty. We can find some believers yeah. who will help us. It... I think we can. Mm. Well, you guys could do that. Mm. You guys are also all welcome. Mine is Triton over there to um, Angel slash my house. Um, it's kind of big though, and there's like a ton of rooms, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. You guys don't have to come. You guys can do like whatever you want. I don't want to like. That sounds fine. That sounds good. Yeah, I do that. I'm I'm good with that. Oh oh. Right, you're rich. Damn, I screwed the pooch on this. Um, What's a pooch? Oh, it's an old phrase. Uh, right, I'm 900, so I still remember some stuff from back when it was real. Uh, it was a dog, like a... Uh, anyways, it's a weird phrase. It's oh, like a Zorp. Yeah, like a Zorp. Like a Zorp, yeah. Like, you know, yeah, like a Zorp. You know the Zorp uh, Model 3? Yeah. They had four yeah, legs. Yeah, three legs. Yeah, oh, yeah, you, three the three. Legs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. 
And as you guys are chatting, uh, you hear uh, doors open um, as uh, the plane begins to set down. And as it finally jostles to uh, settle, you see two large um, gentlemen walk through uh, the front of the door, uh, the front of the ship to where it exits. And uh, it says, all right, all right, step on up, uh, single file now, display your workies, uh, your like work cell basically keeps track of everything about who you are uh your work card is how the corp tracks everything about you um they know everything about you it's your main money how you pay um it's work card also doubles as your cell phone it's a thin piece of glass that is has a cybernetic uh board built into it that runs everything um you can swipe it when you need it you can display things virtually off of it but you all have your um, work cells that these workies that uh, um, Triton gave to you. And I, when we, we're about to take a little bit of break because it's 8.35. And so I want to give us a, a little bio break. But I want you all in this break, think about how, um, we're going to come back and talk about how you rig them to allow you to get past this security gate. How do you guys um, mess with this technology? to allow you to um, get past whatever scan that they want to do to um, check what your job is supposed to be. Um, but that will be in just a moment. Hey, y'all, uh, this is Bollock Bion returning home on Roll20. Um, we're going to be back in just about seven minutes, so keep your butts where they are or go to the bathroom and then be back in seven minutes. That's the main thing. Okay, bye. See you soon. Hey, y'all, we are back. Welcome back to Bollock Bion, returning home. We're about to get right back into where we left off. Uh, you all had been uh, conversing and talking about what got us to where we were on the spaceship. Uh, as you all are standing in the back, sort of huddled by the back gate, uh, you see two uh, guards come in and start asking to see single file folks' IDs through their, um, how's it called? their uh work calls their uh cell phones that essentially act as your currency act as your um identification it does it act as your entertainment your uh worky and so um they come out there they start having folks uh lining up going through um there's less order on this level so it's not really um like first name or like there's no people just are rushing to get in um, how do you all want to handle this scenario? Get into line. Do it. Get into line. A line? All of y'all just like hop into line? I just walk forward. Mm -hmm. Confident. <laughs> I get into line as inconspicuously as I can, mm -hmm. which is very conspicuous. Because <laughs> you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this is what I look like. <laughs> yeah, I jump into line. I'm excited. So you all. I start. Mm -hmm. I start streaming myself online <laughs> as Angel. As Angel, you pop out your uh, phone and you see an actual extension from your wrist actually extend out through a small point. It's almost like. A single blade would emerge, but instead of being a blade, it flips out and it's like a, a selfie stick that's attached to your actual wrist. So you like pop your phone in and you've got it like right here and like you start streaming yourself. What do you say? Hello, all my viewers. <laughs> I'm Angel and I'm streaming 
in a line that I'm about to get through with no hassle. For Come s- join me. For someone who looks exactly like themselves, that was the least convincing like impersonation. <laughs> I love I it. I just woke up. Mm-hmm. I just woke up as no, no, an no. elemental. I love it. No, 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 I love it. I really appreciate it. I like this idea of like you are you're in Angel's in her body, kind of, but still doesn't like know how you would act so a little bit of self-consciousness no it's beautiful um so you all uh, hop yeah you hop in a line and is he mm-hmm. is he takes out her phone as well it's also through her wrist and yeah. um hello to all my followers i am also in this crazy line look at this takeout garbage they gave us on this flight we're supposed to be going to earth so it's supposed we were promised single a single piece of bread with a this. slice of cheese and a tomato. It's it's, ridiculous. it's the fire festival meal, a hundred percent. Oh my god, you have like four <laughs> followers. That's amazing. I have eight thousand. What are you, Jesus? <laughs> uh, I also extend my phone and say, Hello, fans of Robert. It's me, Robert here. I take out an EMP on my cell phone and <laughs> and, and all three of their streams continue on online. And so <laughs> you have this moment where everyone's trying to get stream, but suddenly it cuts out because of Ambo's electrical um, uh, little pulse. You see the guys who is watching something on his um, sunglasses, like shake them, smack them. Damn, I guess the battery ran out. Tucks it away. Gets is like kind of looking in line. Um, how? So what what did you all do to your work IDs, to your files, to your identification, to allow you to feel so confident to just like hop in line and make your way through? The great thing about Balak Bayan, because it is a collaborative story building thing, like truly, like just tell me, like what what did you all do to modify it in a certain way to allow yourself to like feel so confident to get through this? She, we were talking a little bit in the break about um, how you might want to navigate the situation personally and i still want to give you narrative control if you want to do that but i also want to say like before we land in our city i want to give you the option like how'd y'all prepare for this um check you guys go first and then i can discuss after unless someone has like a strong strong idea in which case well I put an ID on my phone that mm. was super inconspicuous. Um, my name is now Alien Smith, and my job is an administrative assistant. Mm. No one's gonna question that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so boring. Oh the, God, yes. And the corp, and you can say administrative <laughs> assistant because you you work for the corp. Everybody works for the corp exactly. in some level, in some way but you're categorized as that. And so you feel confident in this data file that you downloaded. I imagine um, all of this was done with Ambo's help, like using yes. his sort of like ability to um, physically hack the phones to like change them in a certain way. Yeah. But I also imagine a lot of this information might've been benefited from um, our St. Elmo. Or even our saint reaching out to like some of the spirits to and um, some of the dead to figure out some like um, you know you know how um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys something that is a hundred percent false but I'm gonna use as a reference you know how all these people um, cheat when they vote by uh, claiming to be a dead person basically that that's that's what you guys are kind of doing um, people who died at their boring jobs yeah exactly for the court yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Mine's, right. mine's data entry then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, what what's our uh, what's our aliases when we when we talk to these guards while I'm programming you? What is it, everybody? Mm-hmm. So we got uh, Alien Smith. Is Smith. it? <laughs> yes. Very okay. Very inconspicuous. Thank you. Next. Next. Uh, my name is Robert Employee. Robert <laughs> Employee. All right. No one should guess. That actually tracks. He's a part of the employee brand of robots. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, staring Tom at me. What's that? Is I'm he? Tom Collins. Tom, Tom Collins. Collins. <laughs> okay. 
Alien Smith. Wait, I'm, I gotta take these down because I. You guys are gonna have to. You're gonna. These are gonna get called back. Like when, just want you know. Alien Smith, Robert employee. Uh, and then Tom Collins. <laughs> Guarantee you, somebody's gonna be named Ben Dover. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they are. Mm-hmm. I'm Angel. Um, I don't think I need to use a last name because I think I'm technically a hot, rich socialite. So things just kind of work out. Does Angel have a last name? Yes, it is Moon. Angel Moon. Angel Moon. Joan approves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? And me, I'm little uh, worker. And I'm, okay. I'm just like a little worker bee buzzing around, doing people's leftover office mm-hmm. you know, work. <laughs> me in real life. <laughs> All right, is that everybody? Just yourself? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, you? I'm, and I'm Legolas. Let's do this. Legolas! <laughs> I I hate that you have this power. I hate <laughs> that I gave you this much control. Uh, Lego Loss. Will and Durr. And you know the crazy thing is that that that's two names. Lego and Loss uh, is mm-hmm. Lego <laughs> Loss. Loss. <laughs> so uh, you all hop into line, and uh, Angel uh, Moon falls into the back, um, and. You all um, sort of pull forward your IDs. Uh, they look at you. They look down. So, uh, Alien Smith, Robert Employee, Little Worker, Lego Lost. That's a weird one. Um, and Tom Collins. Okay. You you big fan of Tom Collins? Do you like his music? In this reality, Tom Collins' music has survived for millennia. It is uh, one of the few pieces of audio um, history that we still have. And uh, as someone who's clearly a huge Tom Collins fan, I don't want to bore you with all the songs that play on repeat. Um, but Listen, I know this is a trick question. Tom Collins is a drink. Bill Collins is the musician. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice try trying to trick me, buddy. Thank you. Come Thank you. Me after a drink. <laughs> uh, nice, nice, nice. That's egg on my face. Uh, and so <laughs> he turns around and says, oh, so you like to drink? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Your name. Me? Yeah. Mr. Cool Loss. It, Let's see. A lot of, a lot of Lego Lass is a sovereign citizen. <laughs> yeah. Lego Lass, shut the fuck up. A lot of lip for someone trying to get into my city. Honestly, I thought, for some reason, I thought you'd be taller. Um, no, it's cool. All right. My name is Barty, by the way. Come on. You can keep going. And That's a nice name, Barty. Thank you. Oh. Oh my god. Is that Angel Moon? Oh my god. It, what? How come nobody told me Angel Moon was on this subservient floor? We should have brought her. I'm no, no, so no, no, sorry, no, no, no. Miss Moon. No, I'm no, so listen. sorry. This is such an embarrassment. No, don't. I'm doing that thing that rich people do where they pretend to be like everybody else mm. and just, you know, suffer a little bit. Mm. So I'm. I'm. With this, I'm secretly don't tell anybody. I know I look exactly like what you think, but I'm I'm just gonna be like all of these others. She's an administrative assistant. Oh, oh my god, I'm gonna be just like her. Oh that level you know, of you like just, worthlessness. You, you <laughs> okay, is... one to do the needless suffering thing. I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, what? Jesus was the first one to do the need- needless suffering thing. I don't know who that is. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 he looks at and to see you looks like wow. So people like you because you're real. And honestly, this is so real yeah. of you. Staying <clears throat> humble, connected to these, these small folks. I really value it. Thank you. Um <laughs> and 
well, this is obviously you, and like scans it real. Doesn't even look at it. And says, All right, well, uh, come on in, and um, you're. Are they? Are these? Are these people with you? Oh yeah, they're my employees. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, this oh. isn't an, um, an an employee bonding thing. Oh. Um, I wanted to understand. It's like an undercover that. boss kind of thing. Okay, I yes. get it. Yeah. Yes, I am undercover mm -hmm. and a boss. Okay, but they still know because they're your boss. Yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> As if they would have a thought. It's so clever. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody laugh. Everybody laugh right now. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a good laugh? Did y'all like that laugh? Was that too scary? No? Are still with us? No, try, oh yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Um, okay. I'm just kind of doing my job. Uh, and you get let out and uh, get taken to um, a bus, like a hyper bus that you guys pull out from the uh, ship we open up onto the actual um, Circuit City spaceport. Um, and in this space, uh, you look out and you kind of just see the um, an overlay of the city and like a, a, a gap in the middle off in the distance, but it's hard to really tell from this angle. Um, and as you're walking out of the ship, you notice um, the people from the upper levels um, have are like getting off on their own sort of platform and being like shuttled off in different spaces. And you guys um, have been like sort of corralled into your um, sort of section and are led onto a bus that starts taking you off. And it starts going... Uh, Welcome to Circuit City. Some of y'all may never been here before, but we're so glad to have you on board. This is a city that still exists on our planet Earth, the original colony for humanity. And we really appreciate you coming and visiting and patronizing, uh, giving us your patronage. And uh, as you look out, you see a map. And as on our shuttle, you see a little map highlight on the side. Uh, the voice continues. We'll be taking our route through all seven layers of the circuit. Well, avoiding the seventh, but keeping our route through the first six. So for folks who are trying to make it to the Corp HQ, we'll be making our first step here on level one. Folks trying to make it to the building section as well as the Corp Cult, please make your way to section two. If you're trying to make it your way to the arms and munitions, the gun patrol and the cybersecurity, please make your way to level three. If you're looking for the living quarters for the town, please make your way to level four. Upon level five, you'll find Entertainment Row where we have all of our artists and our lovely gangs of those entertainers existing and performing. Number six, it is the burning pleasure ring the district where you're looking to get your jollies filled be sure to make your way on down and number seven the pit of acid do not go to the pit of acid um and the bus voice turns off as it trucks along um shu luzon's character um pulls up their workings looking through angel's information and finds out that Angel has a home that they bought actually to pretend to be a normal citizen in the uh, residential district, in the living quarters. She has like a massive structure that she bought up on the cheap. So it's not really like living like those people, but uh, she purchased an apartment building just for herself. Um, and so you know this, um, and I imagine you tell the group um about this uh it's like well, yeah what is it like when you tell them where you're going so i don't know about you guys but um apparently i own things and there's a building and um it looks like i own it i actually think i own the entire block i don't really know um but i'm gonna go there um i mean i noticed we just met and you guys don't have to like summit with me or anything oh my god like you guys can i'm sure you guys have like mcmansions or whatever to go to but um yep you, yeah so you're you're like welcome to go there or like you know the ring of, of pleasure i saw your face light up so you can go there or whatever but um 
I might kind of want to lay down for a bit. Group thoughts. Do you have a cellar or a dark, damp place where I could rest? No, but I have like a bathroom. That would be fine. Okay. All right, so uh, Ghost Boy has bathroom. Anybody want to call other I dibs? Said, I've lived about poverty my whole life and I've never really like done the whole like rich person thing. So I would love to ball out at your mansion and like order in a shit ton of food and like do whatever, like jump on beds and stuff, whatever rich people do. Okay, which is great, but that's not where we're going. We're going to like a normal place. We have to be normies. Mm -hmm. So um, you just have to just, you know, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's only like a four bedroom. Your mansion right? used to be an orphanage. <laughs> we still order food? Yes, you can order food. Yeah. Um, double yes on the orphanage. I think technically mm -hmm. I was the one who kicked out all the kids. Ah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Ah. And so, as you all are riding and making your way through, um, let's see if I could find the right one. That's what I was looking for. I think so. Um, is that it? No. Here we go. As we're pulling across out of the uh, spaceport, we gaze upon the actual circuit city for the first time time the acid has been dripping and uh falling it almost looks like it's now raining it and as you look down you see certain pockets of the actual city have got raindrops that are sizzling and smoking as they land on where they are but the covering of this bus seems to be protected as you all are moving and as the bus pulls out onto its first um sort of road you look at the other cars around you and though to call them automobiles would be inaccurate because none of them are uh, there's no bicycle port there's no wheel portion on them they all sort of be existing as cubes or spaces of themselves rectangles that light up as the magnets from underneath vibrate off the magnets on the base of the actual roads as they hover along, taking uh, folks to their destinations. Um, as you look out, you guys are gazing into uh, the uh, sort of uh, space and you see, um, what do you see? What do you guys see when you look out onto the city? What do you notice? I notice the fog, mm -hmm. the smog that's uh like slowly it's lower than where normal smog should be mm -hmm. um i could see the tire fires uh burning off in the distance mm -hmm. you could smell uh that pollution and when you say looking off into the distance um yeah. you actually start to make your way onto a um ramp leading from the top level cutting away through um this beautiful sort of uh, nice, clean, very uh, well put together display of a city to the lower level where it starts to get a little grimier, a little dirtier as it's moving around. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, what else do other people see? See all the people huddled around those fires, mm -hmm. people going about their lives, mm -hmm. So crowded, so cramped, mm -hmm. so dirty. Too many people. Just and that's what like comes to your mind, particularly is like there's so many bodies. There's so many just like individuals running around. Um, um to Mr. Ferryman's mind. So many souls. So many souls. Very true. And one second, I'm just gonna make a quick edit here. There you go. We just updated the overlay. Perfect. Alright. What else are folks saying while they're out? There's all of these advertisements for crisp, clean, white sneakers. Mm. Really makes me want some, to be honest. Get your sneakers now. Get your fresh pair of, what are they called? Are they the Air Force 27s? Like, what, what, what are these shoes um, branded as? Um... It's Swift. <laughs> It's a K-Swiss. K-Swiss made a return 
Hell yeah, I love this. I love this reality. Get your fresh K Swiss now on, um, and it pops up a date that you all know it's like twenty thirty seven. It's like what that? That's not right. That's so long ago. Um, and as you, yeah, as you sort of make your way around, um, Joan, Usra, Shu, what do you all see as you guys uh, gaze out your windows? The fashion is incredible. <laughs> like even though these people have nothing, they have put so much care and effort into everything that they wear. <laughs> you know, there's no more cotton. There's no more natural fabric so everything is patent leather everything's got that shine of that plastic mm -hmm. you can tell that people use whatever they had shower curtains and they made a skirt <laughs> they everything that they did you can tell there's been so much care and even though these people don't have much it's a really really vibrant place mm -hmm. nice and you look around and you see the resourcefulness that exists and to be fair you're still in a very nice part of the city. You're still seeing a very pretty part of it. And you're like making your way past the first level into the second. And as you're rolling through the second, you start making your way into the third. And this gets a little tougher. This is the corpse um, martial division. The law and order exists here. Um, closest right next to the um, living quarters to quell any insurrection, any sort of questioning by the citizens. Um, and so um, as you're riding around and as you're making your way down, um, yeah, Joan, Usro, what sort of pop out to Alien and Little as you're gathering um, all this new information? Mm. I've, I'm seeing all these like fluorescent signs with the leading up to like that acid river that mm -hmm. we're very interested in. Mm -hmm. It's really catching our attention. There's like a smell to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, I feel like I'm going to try checking it out soon. Mm -hmm. Let's keep an eye on that. Want to check out or the origin of the acid river. That smell, so intriguing. It's almost as if it's calling to you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Up next, Usra, hit us with what um, uh, shouts out to you about Circuit City. Well, I'm noticing a lot of stray animals, um, as well as, like Mr. Ferryman said, a lot of bodies. Mm -hmm. And as I'm sure you know, as an Uswang, I have insatiable bloodlust. Mm -hmm. So I can't help but notice that a lot of people probably wouldn't notice if some of these animals and possibly humans <laughs> just need a missing. just need a little nibble, just a little nibble, yeah. just just a little yeah. no 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 of a little a little long flight. Yeah, you know, and honestly, cranky. some. Cranium with a little bit of skull would go a long way. You know, it really, yes. yeah. A fave. Mm. And so you're looking around, um, thinking about what your meal might be later this evening, what you're going to be consuming to uh, give you greater sustenance. Um, Absolutely. And so as you all are making your way and uh, riding in the city before... Um, you pull out of the martial territory, the uh, sort of security run district of the of Circuit City, the third level, Ring Three. At the very base of the ramp, you all are stopped, um, and the uh, hover shuttle stops at a moment, pulls to a side. You look out, you can see the city sort of extending beyond you all uh, in a distant as um, it's just covered in smog and the acid rain is eating at uh, anything that's sort of out in the space. Um, and as the door uh, opens on your hover shuttle, you see um, a large individual step into frame sort of popping up and says, <clears throat> Oh, well, <coughs> welcome, welcome to uh, to Circuit City. Hope you all like it here. I'm part of the uh, welcome 
committee here with the corp, uh, part of corp security. And uh, as you all know, a, a given feature of uh, corp life as we live here is that we all live in safety and comfort because, uh, you know, me and the corp will keep you all safe. Uh, but in order to make that happen, um, we got, well, we got to pay the bill somehow. And uh, I'm sure none of you are all aware of this before you got here, but uh, this is where you pay your entry tax. And um, you see uh, the sort of big uh, guy pushes aside and another individual of equal size sort of steps forward. You see a glint of silver and um, black and some other metals start to shine off off the knuckles of this individual as they step onto uh, the space. You look, they've got glasses covering it, but clearly some like um, wires and veins uh, intertwined running on their skin leading to where their eyes are as they're looking out. And uh, the first guy uh, speaks up again, regular looking dude, just sort of like um, kind of, uh, let's say medium height, it's got uh, brown hair, scruffy, looks average, uh, nothing really identifiable about him except for uh, his hands as he looks up, you see um, he's got rings on all of his fingers, um, but instead of being like, actual rings they're segments of the skin that are pulled apart and you just see like electricity and like lights sort of flowing out from where the joints meet and he um says yeah just need your entry <clears throat> just need your entry tax right here and then you'll all be along to go so uh, that'll just be uh i believe two thousand credits per person as you line up angel's got this two thousand credits is an exorbitant amount of money Per person, no, Angel is very popular. Dude. She's very popular. She's no, an no, influencer. No. Mm. You guys, you don't understand. Like Angel didn't have any money with her. Rich people never carry money with them. What? I don't know. She was trying to like do this thing where she was like gonna be a normal person, and she she, she wasn't very well, good well, about people this. People have some money on them, not a lot, but some. She doesn't know anything. Mm. They say time is money. Expand. <laughs> Expand on that. No. All right. So nobody has ideas. Is that is that what I'm getting at? Well, well, I mean, as you guys are discussing this and like having a back and forth on what to do, um, you actually see one of the guys talks to one of them, and the guy's up front, and he's chatting with them, and it's Triton. They pick up Triton, oh. and says, "Oh, oh, the old man doesn't." have any money to pay oh you didn't know about the the entry tax oh no i had no idea no one told me in the literature or anything it's fine um uh, i can get it to you uh, tomorrow or later this week I'll, i'm good for it i promise and he's like oh but i know you're good for it dude i i know you got it so um just to make sure for all of our sakes i'm just gonna give you something to remember me by so you can um Make sure to pay me when you get it, right? So come on, let's let, let's go uh, make a memory happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, he grabs Triton by the scruff of the neck. And uh, everyone else on this bus, if you're wondering um, if you don't have enough money, uh, what to do, take a look. And he shoves Triton out of the bus and uh, as he's stumbling, kicks him onto the ground. And you and see this guy um and his buddy with the sunglasses look at you all he stays on the bus as the main um corp guy sort of pulls out um and he's got the ringless fingers on his hands um and he says the thing about the corp is we use a lot of technology to keep you safe bud and to keep all of you safe and with that um and he flexes his hands and suddenly um titanium knuckles appear where those gaps were extending out and he says we just got to make sure that folks know the rules around here especially as you start to go to where you're all going to be staying and he winds up and just can, well, can i step in before you beat up <laughs> yeah Titan? absolutely okay. well i say the only person who is gonna beat up this old guy is gonna either be me or uh harrison's character ombo so 
I want to do a weak move mm -hmm. and give in to my bloodlust. Ooh, hell yeah. So you uh, take a token. What does that look like? So you give in to your bloodlust. It comes over you in a moment. Um, what does it look like? Because this is a weak move. I'm going to have it. I'm going to say it has to be something like when you give in, you don't transform fully into your true okay. form but something physical about you changes maybe your eyes go black maybe okay. you, the hair on your neck um your hair starts to change color or almost disappear into the shape of your like what about you because that that's going to be the weak the thing that is weak about this you were you were entering a bloodlust you're getting into this like mode where it's fu it's fight or fight um and with it you do have this one weakness so I partially change into my true form, but yeah, not fully. Not fully. And you decide to me what how part like what does that partial look like? Okay. Well, um, for those of you who don't know, wait, should I describe my true form? No. Just describe no. Okay. describe like do your hands chain to to be what it is? Uh, yeah, you know, I want my long braid to change into my tail. Ooh, I like that a lot. So okay. your long braid you get mad and you, it's almost like your hair grows longer and longer, but it like disappears into your back yeah. and suddenly yeah. there's a braided tail leading out from behind you. Um, and the end is like pointy. Yeah, it's, it's a sharp point at the end. And so yes. you see these guy, this guy start to wind up to punch down on Triton. Um, making sure folks know who's in charge here. And you give in and let yourself um, change a little. So keep track. You got yourself a token. Keep track of okay. this. Also, I found out allegedly there's only a maximum of 30 tokens at a given time. Let's see. Let's see how that plays out, what that vibe is. Because also, we went. We economy. Didn't have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it's fixed economy bullshit. Uh, but <laughs> you, um, so you change, you grab yourself uh, a token. Um, what do you do between so standing in between you and the outside of the bus is this guy the one with the glasses and the knuckles um yeah. and so he sees you and he's got his uh like leather duster on that sort of long extended he's got his uh sunglasses and he takes them off and you see them are um inside of his eyes are just like truly two robotic eyes that are um, silver with blue rings um, inside of them, neon, and they like, only, you see them focusing in on you as they shift and change, and then they zoom at your tail between your legs. And you mm -hmm. see, he takes a step back and then doubles down and he says, mm. okay, okay. Uh, hey, hey, Martin? Martin, we... Finish up what you're doing. Come on. We should not. Do you let him finish what he's saying? What do you do? I want to take my pointy tail. Yeah. And like pierce his temple and like go through Ooh, shit. his eyes. Jesus. And so, and so <laughs> you're, I love it. So, and he's like, Martin, we got to go. We, we really shouldn't be here. And you, and as he's looking, Martin turns out like, Billy, relax. It's all what? And you see, he sees your tail. You jump, and your tail goes through and literally stabs through his eyes to the other side. As he yeah. spazzes, and you see sparks start to shoot out. He screams and flops down the stairs as you retract and it falls down. And he looks up and sees you, and he says, "Aswang, Aswang, no, 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 no. unauthorized Aswang." Un and he's like, you can see him looking for his work cell to try to grab it um at this moment triton uh who's been bloodied he's missing some teeth and uh, a little bit of oil and blood it's coming out of his mouth goes up and starts scrambling on this guy because he realizes that if word gets out already that there are free elementals mm -hmm. in the city it's no good and so he's like, no, it's, uh, it, it, and he's struggling uh, to stop this guy. Um, what do, what do other folks do? I, 
I take the hammer, mm-hmm. my favorite hammer out the side of um, of um, of my pack. Yeah. I run up and I uppercut um, the guard with my hammer mm-hmm. to knock him out. And so uh, you take your hammer and uh, he kind of sees you coming and he like tries mm-hmm. to get up, but his uh, being kind of like dealing with uh, mm-hmm. Triton interact with him and you see uh, uh, Alien now just stabbed uh, this other individual, Billy, with his eyes. You cut across through the as he falls through and he sees you coming. He pushes Triton out of the way with a shove and is about to get the phone up when you ring the, fu- the hammer up front underneath him and kind of mm-hmm. clock him in the chin. He lifts up, falls to the ground, dropping the phone. Uh, he's not dead he's knocked out but the other guy is and as you all are standing there um and sort of while like looking around at this scene you well what do the rest of y'all see on the bus because it wasn't just you all on the shuttle what do what do the other citizens do when they see this happen? Because I imagine at first they were very scared. I imagine the shakedown starts beginning. They see one oh, this old man start to get pulled up and beaten. Um, and now, what do they look like? I think they began to avert their eyes, look mm-hmm. down as if it wasn't happening. Oh, and now they're taking a slight peek. I. Love this. I actually, I think, I think this is great because um, we talked about this uh, previously. But one of the things in our notes were these story elements, um, and the enslaved desire justice and vengeance were the things that we decided on. So I think the actual people here almost catch it. They clock it. They're like, "Oh shit, people are." No, nobody's free. We all work. No one's no one's off their leash. We're all doing what we need to do. Um, and you see them all uh, tear a gaze. Um, and now you all have... Uh, you see the bus driver um, turns and looks at you all. It's uh, an, uh, like a man. Um, it's, it's a woman who's is seated up um, and has got uh, black hair, um, and it looks, uh, it's kind of like medium sized build, kind of sitting down in her, um, badge and blue uniform that clearly denotes her job. Um, from the waist down though, um, she's resting on a, uh, bed of, it's like cushion. And then it's like, you ever see those like balance platforms that you like stand on the half moon? It's that, but instead of the bottom being rubber, it's metal, and legs are uh, metal, like spider legs are extending out from it. And you see with her eight different leg attachments, she's like kind of settled into the bus, the hover shuttle to control it, uh, and says, wow, what a, what a mess um, we got into on this side. Um, I guess I'm going to have to clean it up, or if any of y'all want to volunteer um, to take care of it while I maybe close my eyes for a little bit. We got this. And um, you see the other individuals on the bus close their eyes as you guys. Uh, what do you do with these bodies? One of the, one of these dudes is still alive. Also, so, what, what aid does anyone provide Triton? Can I um, not provide aid to... <laughs> Okay, this perfect. I love it. Let, but, let, let, let this old man stay bleeding in the corner. No, no, no. somebody else could, but yeah. while um, anything else is happening, I um, I start collecting money from the passengers um, for the aid. Because mm, this was meant to look like someone's going to ask about this money. This wasn't a slick con that just these two guys pulled. This is probably a little more institutionalized control over this tax. So you mm-hmm. still want to cover that up. Um, and so you start slipping around and talking to people um, and convincing them to give them mo- the, yeah. some money. I imagine not to... Well, actually, I don't want to take that. I want to take that to you. I, like, you might be secretly uh, someone who's starting your own religion. So you need a little bit of cat- a startup flow. 
Um, what do you What do you do? I go around and I talk about the wounds mm. and how difficult it's going to be to heal and how expensive that is. And don't you have a little bit in your heart? Don't you want to help anyone else? I know we're all we're all in this bus together, and we're in a, a common situation. And it it's your brother out there. You know, wouldn't you help your brother? As soon as you say that, you hear like, yeah, of course, and a murmur of nod. It's like, we'll give what we can. And you see people, um, like, you see one of them had, uh, like, a everything here runs through your um, your working. Every, everything is tracked through this card that is everything. So you see one of the guys, uh, Billy, the one with the sunglasses and the knuckles, um, had a reader on him. And so you take this reader... Um, he's attached it to the back of his card and you take yours, you swipe it, um, you grab other people's, you start swiping them, collecting sort of like some of the funds. You mess with it so it's not as exorbitant as the original extortion was, but you start sort of making your way through. Um, yeah. Joan, were you going to say something? I don't, uh, what does Little get up to while this stuff is happening? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> I'm going to start using my power since I'm a tick ballon. Yeah. And I'm going to shape shift mm. into uh, this old animal that we used to be very familiar with on Earth a long time ago. Mm. A giant anaconda. And I'm just going to start eating uh, the guard. And get Hell it, yeah. Get rid of all the evidence. So <laughs> I start downloading all the data from yeah. Earth. Figure out, like, what is the shape of the anaconda, mm -hmm. you know, the bloodthirst levels, and yeah. download all that data, morph into mm -hmm. the snake, and uh, I eat it, or eat the bodyguard. And you see um, the dead one and the, the one that's unconscious, or just the dead one? Uh, just the dead one. Okay, cool. You could also eat the unconscious one. You could, like, I don't want to take that choice away from you. I just wanted to know whether or not you were, al you were also going to be a murderer or just a, a compost machine? We, we want some answers. We might need to interrogate this, this guard. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and so you, um, from the back of the shuttle bus, lift up, and you um, look down on your worky, and uh, you're updating some of the, like, the downloads. You take a card out from it, and you like plug it into your helmet, and you like pull the visor down. And as you pull the visor down, begins the transformation of you into the anaconda. And as you, like, take a step forward and forward, you see your hands move up around your side, and then they move up less and less, and you just kind of, like, start shimming. And then you start getting shorter, almost, as you begin morphing and your legs descend into a slithering form. And by the end of the bus, as folks look on the outside watching the videos, they see you sort of doing that, like, cheesy um, escalator Animals. gambit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, one of those things. And, and then you come out. It is, it's a very cool Animorphs ripoff that I'm providing here, Shu. I just want it to be known. And uh, as you, uh, as you as you technomorph out um, and you start coming down, you actually are at the body, at the base of the uh, body of this guard. And you start chomping your way um, and eating this individual. And, um, yeah, so, Angel, you're the only one who hasn't got an option to make a choice here. What do you decide to do? I started live streaming, um, and I open up my wrist, and I let everyone know that the government is just lying, okay? This is Angel Moon. I am living as a normal person, and people are just making up ridiculous things, like loose elementals. Like, I don't even know what that is, but that just sounds ridiculous. Anyways, I'm gonna be here on this bus. Anybody wants a selfie, mm -hmm. you know, same price as always. Give your girl a shout out. Is this, and... is this a weak move? Are you, are you like, like I, I, should I give you a token for, inviting suspicion you're like videotaping what's happening there's like direct oh. i want i want to ask you your intention before i presume onto it with your okay yeah my intention was to distract because someone might have seen something and Ooh. so i'm causing an even bigger 
distraction. I love this. So um, this is like a neutral move where you're like... So this is a neutral move. Yeah, you're manipulating yeah. the information here and you're kind of like falsifying it slightly and making the shift and like dispelling... Like, that conspiracy is so crazy. No one's talked about what conspiracy... Like, you're already dispelling a conspiracy that doesn't exist. So the mention of it, the mere idea of it, when it gets brought up, is like, oh, people are crazy. This is the new thing people are already talking about. This is about. ridiculous, yeah. Very yeah. This cool. is... I can't believe it's happening. Anybody... Does, does anybody want a selfie with me? Uh, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> uh, and so... You guys are now, um, some of you are still, uh, is anyone still on the bus? Is everyone else off it now? And so, yeah, what, what's I'm on Mr. the bus. Yeah. I, uh, I uh, put myself against the wall of the bus trying to be inconspicuous. Mm -hmm. And after that person was killed and eaten, <laughs> I uh, started muttering while looking, you know, to the wall of the bus saying, no, no, it's good. Go, to go towards it. Go towards the light. Yes. <laughs> It's good. No, go, go, go. I'm serious. But I don't want... No, dude, I, like, I just saw your friend kill me, and I don't... It's fine. They're eating my body. straight. There's literally, like, why... Go. Go straight. <sighs> so I'm just muttering in an argument. Yeah, so the, <laughs> this guy who now, when you look at... Still's got his weird, like, blue eyes. Like, for some reason, that's still in his uh, spiritual form. Um, and as you're having this conversation, uh, you... The, the rest of y'all are outside gathered with this individual. Um, the original plan had been to take the shuttle still further down south, uh, not south, um, to the lower ring, um, to ring number four, and um, go to the home of the Angel, a.k.a., uh, sorry, Luzon, a.k.a. Angel, had um, occupied in this space. Um, but now you have an unconscious corp uh, security guard who's standing there, um, who's laying down in front of you. You know his... Yeah. We have his work pass with all the money on it. A and you have the work pass with all the money on it. That has been... Um, you've been swiping and like transferring, but that is linked to the corp. So that is useful to have. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you all want to do with Martin? I think we should get some answers. Uh, first, could I grab um, the uh, device just so I could plug it into mine just to see if we could get more information? Ooh. Absolutely. So you get the device from Izzy and you plug it into your work style and you start yeah. engaging with it. Um, what comes up? What do you notice? I imagine this is... Um, this guy is... They don't send an important person to do a shakedown. That's not that's not what happened. This is a low level dude. He's like in the organization. He works them. This is clearly doing it on someone's behalf. Mm -hmm. Is that where you're trying to find out, or like, are you just trying to? Yeah, you're trying to figure out the report. Yeah, who does he work for? What's the mm -hmm. reporting structure? Or yeah, what's his profile? Mm -hmm. um, now that I saw that we have uh, a thick balang with us, mm -hmm. that. I guess you did. Did uh, the Tikbalang um, reveal themselves to us? Do we all know that they're Tikbalang because they turned into an anaconda? I think you all know each other. Other, other elementals. Okay. I think uh, uh, Triton was like clear about that when he was introducing you all. Yeah. Because this is the one thing I want you like. Now that we're on Earth, oh, you all know each other. You're all like connected okay. in that space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But Aswang, the Aswang is the shapeshifter, right? The Tikbalang is a shapeshifter. The Aswang Tikbalang is a shape. Tikbalang is a shapeshifter. The okay. Aswang is um, like the assassin. The assassin. Yeah. So, uh, could I ask the Tikbalang? Um, can you take the form of this person if we ever need it? Little. Uh, yes, except I'm going to have weird animal qualities along with it. What kind of weird animal qualities? Like a tail? A tail, a fin, like, I have to hide it or else people are going to know. Like, I can't shapeshift fully into a human. I could do animals, but I can't do humans, so. So I will yes, say, it's like yeah. Rob Schneider in the animal. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'll say this. Great I think, uh, actually, yes. Um, uh, uh, 
Yeah, that's more accurate. Uh, just Filipino actor. Um, <laughs> the I think imagine this world is like a little advanced in its body modification, like area, like or technology. Where um, do you, did any of y'all watch Batman Beyond as a kid? Yeah. So there's an episode oh, yeah. within it where there uh, is this like new movement to get your DNA spliced with animal DNA. And then you gain characteristics for, like, different animals. And I think that is probably to an extent, to a degree, in this, like, reality. Where there's, like, people, like, hey, like, as an aesthetically, like, I want to be this person who has, like, I want to have leopard print fur as a human. I'm still a human. I'm not fully transformed into an animal. I'm still a human. So I think there is the gambit where you could play it off. You would just have to explain how suddenly martin had enough money to afford this procedure and chose to get it i think that 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 is you don't have to like necessarily worry about covering up whatever this changes you will just have to explain how you made it happen um in a fiduciary fiduciary sort of understanding well that's good to know yeah if yeah if you want to if you want to assume martin's form over here do you uh do you look at his hands at all? Do you do you get in and look at the ticket the biotech that he's got on him? Oh, my myself? Yeah, yeah you since you're yeah. exploring so, this He's a low level person. I look at it, I look at his tech and it's it's very it's very private grunt grunt level. Mm-hmm. Um what's really interesting is that uh there's a text message or a message or a the message yeah um from uh from his uh from superior's his, officer um, yeah superior captain, officer captain duterte's yeah uh <laughs> yeah, captain though? duterte yeah captain duterte we can choose a different captain. one if that's too if that's too real let's um actually i'm gonna choose uh uh captain captain uh, uh azul captain azul mm-hmm. yeah Captain Azul saying, um, "Meet me, uh, meet me back back on base in uh, ten minutes. Uh, not not ten minutes. Make uh, meet me back on base after your next checkpoint. Mm. After you collect the money. So you keep track of that. You've got uh, this sort of log, and you see on the phone it's tracked that the the money has been uh, already transferred electronically. So this guy's uh, gonna be expecting a meetup, but." However, you all want to resolve that of like if he's not there or not is up to you all. Um, and you see uh, Triton um, sort of like getting himself situated. Uh, does anyone help him get cleaned up, uh, back on his feet? Nope. Yeah, it's nope. fine. I'm old and I don't require nobody's help but mine. Uh, and he... uh, I grab I grab Triton and uh, help him up uh, roughly. Oh, thank you. My personal Grim Reaper, you will tell me when I go, and it's not my time yet. Terrific. I yeah. Oh. An encouraging tap on the back, and it knocks him back onto the ground. Oh! And he he falls back down. Oh, it's okay. I like it down here. And he. Uh, can I, yeah. Can I ask? Can I ask this question? Uh, why did we try to save him? We knew when he's going to die, so he wasn't gonna die then. Even he got beat up for us. <laughs> We could have just let him get beat up. And we could... I have been wrong on the dates. But also, did he not die right now because you did something? That's that's the question you needed to ask. Oh my god, a paradox. Without your own action? Uh-huh. No. Mm. It's like you haven't even seen the season of uh, Lovecraft Country. Oh my god. <laughs> I also really wanted to beat someone up. Also, so. also the the bloodlust like tingled, and you were like, "Yeah, let's go." Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> uh, well, I understand so, that. Yeah. Well, also, this, the good question: Do you um, you see this Tikbalang change into an anaconda and start eating Billy? Um, do you do anything about it? Do you want to get yourself a meal for later? Do you want to like get? Because you, you survive off of flesh, you know. Yes. Well, uh, I'm thinking I'll eat Martin after we're done with him. Unless uh, we still need him. Do we need him? Don't ask me. Ask the group. Well, we should yeah. ask him, like, some stuff. We don't know everything. 
you know? Okay. See, the bus driver what turns to you. Uh, a point. Well, man, I, I should be back on my route. Um, I don't know if I could carry any extra passengers that we may have gathered, but um, do you all know how to get to where you're going on your own? What are you, you're going to help us now? No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you I can't take extra passengers and I might be able to get to where you're going as the regular scheduled passenger list, but any additions I I can't do for terms of service. Okay, I changed my mind. I guess we could eat him, whatever. I think he's like, yeah. coming to awake anyway, so like, go for it. I mean, you guys yeah, I have, I have a to, text, yeah. so we don't really need him. Thank God. The That's day so, yeah. is his day. Do you see it? <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> you see it has been known to be wrong. <laughs> you see Martin, the... is there anything you want to settle with your soul before you move on? He's still unconscious. He's passed out. He's passed out. He's unconscious. Oh, okay. Well, well you can wake him up if someone wants to wake him up so he could be awake for his death. Um, mm. He's a thug. You can totally do this. Yeah. You might hey, shake him a little. What if we, um, mm -hmm. we just leave him on the steps of an orphanage? No, I really want to eat him. Okay. Yeah. Also, if anybody like tells people where we are, they're gonna come after us again. Just yeah. a small side note to remember yeah. that we are supposed to be incognito. Okay. Yeah. Um, the best hmm. way to get rid of evidence is to eat it. Is to eat it. Okay. So I'm gonna eat Martin. Well, well, can we like wake him up and ask him if he has any like last thoughts or anything? Like. Okay. I shake him awake. I say, "Do you have any oh. last thoughts?" Oh. I chime in. You're going to be eaten. What? So think no. quick. Oh no! Ah! And he starts screaming. Um, <sighs> help! Um, Someone! Captain Azul! Somebody! Sh Billy! Like to make your last confession? What? No! Right. And he's like struggling. Are you afraid of anything specifically? So many things. So so many. Get off! And he like is struggling as he's like. There's now six of you try to keep him down. Um, I'm hurting yourself. Struggle, and at this point he's awake, and he, you I, see him kind of reaching for something almost out of his I, pocket. Yeah, I, I bang him on the head again with the hammer, so he passes out. <laughs> Knocks back out. Okay, guys, we have to make a decision: Are we going to kill him, or are we going to torture him? We have to decide before we wake him up again. Okay. <laughs> Let me. What was he? What was he grabbing for? And I reach. And it's a. It's a laser. And it, so it, it's a gun. It, it was like. It was the gun. I put it in it, my pocket. Yeah. Nice. Uh, is there? Maybe, any, can I eat him now? Wait, 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 little. Is there any way that you can kind of like incubate him into like a little pouch or something? Uh, or is he like too big? I could do it. I'll just start sitting on him. And... I mean, you're still digesting this <laughs> other body. Like, do you know how long it takes an anaconda to eat, like a human? Like it's it's a process. Your mouth is distended as you're like, oh yeah, I can get to it in a moment. Like you're like having this conversation as you're sort of like eating this form. Fine. Okay. Uh, I try to save Martin, but uh, alien, you're up. I think so. I eat wait, him. wait, wait. We need to save his uniform. We need to save his uniform. Oh, you take, you take okay. uniform. You take uniform. the uniform. You guniform. guys perform a privacy, uh, like, half circle around Martin as Alien just goes to town. Yeah, uh, I don't like people watching me eat, mm -hmm. so thanks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you yeah. look back, and there's actually nothing left. There's not even bone. It's all subsumed. Um, and uh, the sound is not good. It's not a good sound that no. you hear in the process, but it it is someone enjoying their food. Um, and by the time that they're done, uh, you see uh, Little has also finished their meal uh, going through uh, this entire person, shape-shifting uh, back into themselves, uh, lifting up the visor uh, as they stand. And you all step back onto uh, the bus. As you guys hop on the bus, uh, the... Driver turns to you all and says, all right, uh, I'm back on to our regular scheduled destination. Uh, no one saw a thing and begins driving as they leave this 
very scary situation for everyone involved. Um, and you pull up to this uh, home, this this space in the ring in the fourth ring, um, where you're gazing out and, and looking at every uh, at this space. What does um, Angel's Mansion look like? And this is this is for everybody. Everyone can kind of describe this. Give me a little. Uh, I believe flavor. it's techie. <laughs> it's techie. It's a techie McMansion, maybe. It was an orphanage. Was an orphanage. So wait, wait, so wait, 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 wait. So you, I, I just want to. The person you took over gentrified an orphanage into a home. I, I, oh yeah. I love it. I love it. She's also so walking around with no money. She's, oh, yeah. She doesn't need it. She's wealthy. <laughs> what, what are some other features about it? How how many stories is it? How tall? Give me some real facts. Eight-story mid-rise. It's an eight elevator st- inside. Very tacky decorations like... Um, What's that uh, casino in Vegas, the uh, Bellagio, mm. uh, where everything is supposed to look rich? Yeah. Um, yeah. It does. The Bellagio is a class act. <laughs> I'm an Excalibur guy myself, but yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, marble, mar- <laughs> cheesy marble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for all eight stories, there's only one washer and dryer in the basement. One <laughs> washer <operated>. and dryer. <laughs> For all eight stories. And so, uh, uh, er- Erica, Joan, anything you all want to add in the description of this uh, chateau? There's a, a, a fountain outside, mm-hmm. and people just throw in, like, you know, old bones and remains of people. Fountain making of wishes. bones outside adds a very nice ambiance to this lovely home. There's um, a network of air vents Mm -hmm. that the orphans used to crawl through to sleep around at night Mm -hmm. and they're um quite stable to more weight than you would think an air duct would be built for yeah and so you all um we see a moment of the hover shuttle um sit down pop up like sort of uh moves away as uh the gate to the like chain opens up um, and the gate swings open as you look at this eight-story tall building with marble columns that look so tacky. Um, and okay. you, yeah. One detail about the place is that there's a step and repeat where anybody who enters has to do their like bachelor or bachelorette kind of like introduction before they enter the house. <laughs> you have to like there's a, a doorbell that requires you to say a fun fact about yourself upon yeah. before gaining entrance yeah fun fact doorbell yeah and you walk past the the fountain of bones some of it look animal some of it look human a lot of it looks human um making your way mm-hmm. past as it's decomposing um to the state and you pull up to angel's mansion um as you reach for a key and that is where we're going to end our session for this evening uh when we come back next week we'll find a little bit more at your abode and a little bit more about this mission that you are all on um but before we go let's give a quick round of outros um let's start it off let's go in reverse order of our introductions joan take us away sorry I was muted. Hey guys, this is Joan. You can follow me on Instagram on St. Joan. Harrison up next. Hi again, I'm Harrison Happen. You can find me on Instagram at Harrison as happening and on Twitter, Harrison underscore happen or jump rope number two. Nice. Shoe up next. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at hello there shoe. H E L L O T H E R E X as an X ray, U as in U turn. Heck yeah, Asra. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Asra, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Kanye West, uh, Kanye underscore underscore West. Mm-hmm. There's two underscores. Ben, up next. Hey, Ben Cummings here. Hope you enjoyed all my jokes and japes throughout this game tonight. Oh God, uh, you oh can God. follow me uh, at... 
Sorry, at Ben Cummings, that's B-E-N-C-U-M-I-N-G-S, on Twitter and on Instagram. Quickly becoming uh, the, the the chat's favorite, as we can see. Uh, up next, Erica Geyser. Uh, yeah, I'm Erica, and you can find me on Instagram at Bebeka underscore says. Underscore says. Ooh, I did that incorrect. My bad. It's not a plus sign. It's an underscore. Uh <laughs> And then and there's me. Hey, y'all. I'm Masudak. I've been your GM for this evening. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at MaroodBoy. Um, I'm around playing games on uh, with Indoor Recess on Tuesday nights uh, over on the D&D channel, over on Sundays playing Rivals of Waterdeep with folks. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff I got happening, and you can find it all on my Twitter to keep up. If you don't have any plans for Halloween, um, me and my buddies uh, from the Indoor Recess crew are doing a uh, charoween we're doing a charitable stream for halloween we're gonna be playing a bunch of uh games over on the indoor recess crew channel um so come hang out with us because you best not be going to any parties it's COVID season you you best not be please stay in donate money to a good cause and um be social with us on our channel um but yeah other than that uh, i want to give a huge shout out to roll 20 all the folks uh, over there who help produce and make this show a uh, possibility. We have a blast uh, because they let us have a blast. Uh, yeah, and we can't wait to be back again next week for more Bollock Bion. Uh, but until then, yeah, keep up with us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and social media, and we'll see you when we see you. Uh, good night. Bye.